job. It's probably going to run bonnet pins, isn't it? What's going on, guys? Back again. Hopefully this week, a bit more motivation back. Last few weeks I've been flagging, I think it comes across in the videos a wee bit, but we're back. We're getting closer, lots of miscellaneous bits, and this week we're gonna look at some of the bits that we started looking at last week. So first thing we're gonna look at is the rad, trying to get that Corolla Aventis rad in. Next thing we're gonna look at is the math and how we're gonna solve that huge space issue. Uh, there's also a vacuum pump which we need to get mounted, and if we get all of that done, Maybe we should take a little looky-see at those two remaining engine mounts that need shoring up and finalising. That's it for this episode, so let's get cracking. So, the next job, as you may remember, last time we were looking at getting a radiator in there, and we decided, we, I decided I was going to try a Corolla slash Aventis rad, which has turned up, along with a few other little bits and pieces, little treats. Um... As a side note, drive shafts have been painted. I think you'll agree, they actually look pretty good now. So that's, that's progress. This is cool, so got the little Diddy race car battery, a little cutoff switch, an air filter to try and get that air filter and math in, slimline race fan, and the rad. Now the rad doesn't fit quite how I want it. <laughs> it is still too big. We're gonna to have to do a bit of cutting of both this and that. So let's have a little look at that now. This actually does fit better than the Celica Rad, just, but it's bigger than I thought it was gonna to be, to be honest. I measured this shed loads, but she's big. This is something that I both wanted, but is now causing me a bit of an issue. However, I think with a little trimmage there, it'll actually sit in. Let's get rid of this bracket um, and just trim down these air dam on the side and we might be somewhere close so first thing I'm going to do is just cut off the sides of the rad scary let's, let's do that <laughs> for a bit of metal, so, good. bit of cutting and sculpting with the grinder there and we've got a big old chunk taken out looks a bit different to how it did I have started cutting some funky shape bits of metal though which will just fill it in nicely and give us all that strength back um, so I'm gonna finish sculpting them get them welded in and uh, yeah then we'll have a look at putting some brackets on down here and getting the rad sat in here properly this isn't too bad, eh? Of course it fits. Like a glove. ta -da! Still a bit more to do, but both bits are in there. Just need to get it. Flat back, it's all tacked in. Flat back and then just squirt some weld in all around, flat that back, and then we can make some brackets and sort of see how these things escalate and take absolutely bloody ages in the end, because this was supposed to be a simple task. <laughs> So 
go. Jesus. There we go. Blowing in primer. All that work for a little notch, but it's quite cool. You get some seam sealer just around there, and that'll make that look good. And this is now nice and sturdy again. It's just taken all of that flex that we introduced back out, which is wicked. That's all we need to do. Um, now it's just a case of sticking a bracket there and there at the right height, and we're kind of getting somewhere. Need to drill some more holes in the uh, top brace, and that'll be the rad in. Last episode we were taking a little look at getting this air box in here which obviously isn't going to happen it's got the math in it though and the flow straighteners that you can't see but that are critical to getting the math to work properly obviously this isn't going to go in here so if you spend enough time with one of these little adjustable spanners here and a CAD program you end up with something that looks a little bit like this. So we've retained the factory dimensioned air flow straightener, etc. mounting hole. And this is, I've even put a little bracket on there to try and support this. This being 3D printed, which is what we're gonna do with it, just FYI. I felt like it could probably do with a bit of support. I don't really wanna put all the weight on that. I'm gonna print it in an orientation with the layering not running vertically like that because I think that opens you up to the possibility of some, some uh, snappage but with a bit of careful orientation hopefully this is going to come out nicely I'm going to print it in pet g because of the engine temps etc under the bay in under the bay in the bay so let's get it on the printer and have a look at the results in about seven hours Et voila, I printed this with the PETG. It hasn't printed that well. Uh, this is my biggest area of issue because these are the flow straighteners to keep the math hopefully working properly. It's very close to the throttle body and it's different to the standard airbox, but I'm hoping that that will keep the math happy. I'm reprinting this because I found a couple of errors with my rapid CAD drawing and I'm trying a different orientation to see if it prints a bit nicer. Um, so we shall see, this probably take two or three goes. Overall dimensions are the same, so we can use this now as a little mock-up piece. That sits nicely in there, and it actually clears the headlight perfectly. What is less ideal is if the rad is sitting where we want it, I think there's gonna be a clash there, unless maybe we drop it straight down and around, but it's gotta go in there in the engine. So that'll be, one to work out once we've got the rad firmly mounted, I think. But anyway, that's the concept. Hopefully it works and hopefully those flow straightness work. Like I say, I've got to print another one, but we'll see how that goes. For now, this will do for mock-ups. There's quite a lot of stuff to go in this space here, so I'm not sure about making that a 90 degree bend, but we will see. So while I await my bits of metal, to mount this all i'm going to do is i've bought some tube of the diameter of that bush and some tube of the diameter of that bush and we'll just weld some tube into places so that everything slots together and then drill some drainage holes in the bottom so that no water sits in the bottom of our little locating holes but i need to wait for that and that's probably not going to be here for a little while because everything seems to be taking forever so just quickly this is an air pump and it pumps air using this valve i think which seems to have a vac line on it so i assume that that is picking up when the engine is and isn't under load and when it's not under load it's going to open and this here air pump pumps air through the exhaust and gives you your emissions pass and stops you killing your cat or, I don't know, that's a real guess. Now, 
when I had a small rad, I was hoping to put it like there in the front. Obviously that's not gonna happen. Probably ain't gonna fit in there unless it fits like down there somewhere. Maybe it could, but I'm starting to think and like that it might fit something like that. All this bracketry is just what held it on previously and it was sort of in the front, lower down in the sleeker, something a bit like that, but a bit further back. Obviously the sleeker is a slightly bigger car. So I need to mount that in here, probably something like that. And we'll just take this whole bracket assembly off and try and sit that in there, maybe fab up some new little brackets. So we'll be needing to look at that imminently. That's one thing. The other thing I wanna do is I have stolen these power steering lines off of the Celica. Why, I hear you, you ask? Well, I reckon I might delete the power steering on this car. It's pretty light, there's not a lot to it. Get some space out the way, get some weight out the way. If you wanna be really finickety, it's gonna take some, uh, some load off the engine because it's not gonna to have to drive the power steering pump. And uh, yeah, apparently you get better steering feel. The steering I think in this is over assisted. It's probably about to become massively under assisted. Maybe I'm gonna hate it backing out of my drive. But yeah, I'm gonna use these fittings hopefully to make up a loop, to loop the power steering rack. Um, and yeah, that's another plan. So I think both of those things hopefully will actually happen in the next episode. And we'll go over how we finish mounting that up. Uh, sorry this one's a bit shorter, I appreciate that that's not necessarily everyone's favourite thing, I haven't, feel like I haven't done enough in this one, but I've got a busy old week, I'm going to Silverstone at the weekend to watch the touring cars, so uh, that, should be, that should be a good experience, um, but yeah, let me know in the comments if you'd rather bigger episodes or maybe more condensed episodes with a bit less detail, of what's going on but getting more done or if you if you like these sort of what i sometimes feel are slightly over detailed little vlogs but um yeah until that time next time that time next time take care of yourselves um and yeah i'll see you next week